Hi, I'm Brent Tolke. I'm a research geneticist with the USDA here in Fargo. I'm also a professor at, uh, in the plant sciences department here at NDSU. I'm talking to you today about perennial flax and uh, what we're doing with uh, this new and up and coming crop. Perennial flax, uh, as it would suggest, uh, is a lot like annual flax, except it's uh, perennial, meaning it comes back every year without uh, needing to be replanted. The really unique thing about perennial flax is that unlike annual flax, it's native to North Dakota and uh, actually a lot of the Great Plains. So we can actually uh, capture uh, different varieties of perennial flax just from going out in the landscape and collecting it. Uh, one thing it does have in common with annual flax though is uh, it's high in omega-3 uh, fatty acids uh, in the seed oil, which is uh, Health food supplement, it's something you've probably heard about in the news as being important for heart health. Uh, it also, uh, your doctor may have recommended that you go on fish oil supplements or omega-3 fatty acid supplements and uh, flax is a very good source of those omega-3 fats for that purpose. Uh, so I've actually been working uh, kind of on the sidelines on perennial flax as a breeding goal for quite some time. I'm a breeder by trade. Uh, but uh, in recent years, I've started working with Burton Johnson, Greta Gramig, uh, who are two professors in the plant sciences department, as well as Steve Zwinger from the Carrington Research and Extension Center, uh, to uh, look more at the agronomic side of things. And recently, we obtained a North Central SARE uh, research grant, uh, research and education grant, to start looking at the agronomic aspects of this and also use that knowledge to improve the breeding program that we have started on uh, perennial flax. The whole purpose of our grant is, is basically three things. Uh, one is to determine uh, some uh, parameters for uh, proper agronomic growing of the crop on farmer's land. Simple things like uh, how far apart do you place the rows? Do you put them on 30 inch rows? Do you put them on 12 inch rows? Uh, also, what kind of rate do you seed them at? and getting a better idea of how, how much seed you should be putting down per acre. Also, when's the best time to plant it? Because it's a perennial, you could plant it in the spring or you could plant it in the fall uh, in anticipation for a crop the next year. So those are the type of things that we're looking at. Also, from a weeds perspective, which is the, the area that Greta Gramig is concentrating on, we're looking at how we could uh, grow it optimally in an organic setting where herbicides aren't an option. Are there other intercrops we can bring in in order to enhance weed control and to keep living ground cover? Uh, perhaps perennial grass species or legumes that can provide um, nitrogen or added cover to the soil. Uh, because perennial flax isn't, uh, like annual flax, doesn't have much of a ground cover component, maybe some other inner crops could bring that aspect in. And the third thing, the thing that I find most exciting is, again, I, I wanted to see if any of this knowledge we're getting from the agronomic science side could add some knowledge to our breeding programs, look at uh, other traits that we've neglected so far. And uh, right now we're actually in my uh, perennial flax breeding nursery. Uh, it's here at the Lee and Noreen Thomas farm, otherwise known as Doubting Thomas Farms, uh, north of Moorhead. And we have a, a bit of my collection of uh, perennial flax behind us. Uh, a lot of it is regrowing after uh, having been cut after its first flowering for the year. So uh, it's, it's quite short yet. I have added a few pictures to the slides here to, to give you an idea of what an older plant would look like uh, as it blooms. The seed heads look very similar to annual flax and the plant looks very similar in a lot of ways, except it does have this tendency to, to be able to regrow and produce year after year. One of the things that uh, we've learned so far in this uh, study, which is now in its first year, is uh, an important breeding goal is enhancing seed vigor. When we started growing this in an on-farm setting, we noticed that in some cases, under some circumstances, seedling vigor is a little bit lacking. So this is gonna become one of our breeding goals is to try to enhance that. And that was the result of uh, some of this agronomic work we're working on. Uh, another thing that we need to look at is how to uh, optimize uh, seeding depth to enhance germination and 
uh, especially when conditions get hard. When we're talking about uh, pounding rains and, and crusting a heavy clay soil, is there anything we can do on just the, the way that we seed the crop to enhance uh, tolerance of that at the early seeding, seeding stage? Because the most important thing for getting a perennial established is the seed and getting the seed to germinate equally and reliably to set up a, a nice stand for years to come. So at this point, we're still very early uh, in our studies. There isn't a lot of results yet. Uh, we're learning a lot about that, uh, the early stages of uh, developing plots, developing fields of perennial flax. Uh, as we get those established and we start taking more and more data on yield and ground cover and weed control, uh, we hope to share that with you on uh, some of the YouTube feeds that our lab is putting out. Uh, I have uh, some YouTube videos already on perennial flax available on my website, hulkelab.org, that's H-U-L-K-E lab.org, and uh, hopefully you can learn more about it there.